Hi, and welcome back to part 5 of our videos, on how to set up our C5DK blog package. This video is about the final settings for the blog page type. This video is a bit longer than the other videos. Mostly because that we need to cover, both the page type settings, and how to manage stacks in Concrete 5. But let's get going, as we did in the recent videos, we need to go to the dashboard to make our configurations. Here we need to go to the Pages and Themes menu, and here go to the Page Types page. In the last video, we created our new blog page type, and we configured the basic settings for the page type. If you did not see that last video, please do that now, to fully understand this video. The first thing to do, is to edit the form for the page type. To do that, click on the Edit Form button. First I will add some form sets. I'll click on the Add Set button, and I will give the set a name. Let's call it for blog page settings. You can of course choose whatever name you want. But this will make more sense in a moment. You could also give the set a description, but we will not do this in this demonstration. It has absolutely no technical influence, on how the set will work. So you just need to click on the Add Set button. We also need a second form set. So let's add one more. This one I will call blog page content. These form sets is only here to distinguish between the page settings and the page content. And it will make more sense to you when finishing up the settings. Let's click on the add set button. Now, let's add some page properties to the settings part of the form. I will just click on the little plus icon here on the right, and I will choose the page name from the built-in property tab. Let's add some more page properties to the list. I will add the URL slug property. And let's add the public date and time property. We also need the page description property. This is essential for the blog. And last, we need the page location property. The rest is not necessary, because it will be controlled through the blog system. So. Let's just add the page location. We are now done with the page settings, and the page will now act as any other pages in Concrete 5. You will actually be able to add this page type manually if you want. But now, let's add a content block to the page content set. Just pick, content, from the block section. We are now finished, but I want to name the content block for easier to understand what we are trying to do. I'll click on the little pencil icon, and give the block a custom label. I will simply call it, blog content block. This will make sense a little later. And it might make it easier for you to understand how the page type system works. Let's finish up by clicking on the save button. We are now finished setting up our new page type. We now need to finish up some other stuff to make it a finished blog page type. Let's head back to the page types list page, here we just need to set a page attribute. So let's click on the attributes button for the page. We need to make sure that our blog pages do not populate the menu system in Concrete 5. But we still need the page to populate the page lists on our site. So we need to set the, exclude from NAF attribute. It might be a little difficult to understand. But the thing is, that Concrete 5 has two ways to list pages on the site. One is through the nav menus like the top navigation on your site. The other is through page lists, and that is what we want. So let's exclude the page from navigation menus. And make sure that we do not exclude our page from page lists. Ok, let's head back to the page types list page. All the setting is now done, and it's time to design our page. We need to add all the visual functionality to the page. But to do this, we will do this in another way than you might expect. We will use stacks to contain most of the content blocks used on the blog page. So let's head over to the stacks and blocks menu. The stacks system in Concrete 5, is actually mighty powerful. It gives you the possibility to combine several blocks in one stack and it will enable you to add, move or delete blocks in the future to change the look on all your pages at once. This is great if you need to change the looks on hundreds of pages at the same time in the future. 
this will make more sense while we make the stacks and use them, so, let's add the first stack for our blog page by clicking the add stack button. We need to give the stack a name. Let's call our first stack for C5DK blog header. And click on the add stack button when finished. We now have an empty stack. And you now have to think about what will be shown on the header of the blog page. So let's add some blocks to the stack. Simply click on the add block button, and choose add block. The first block we need is the page title block. This block is fairly simple. The only thing we need to set, is the formatting style. The formatting style is the size of the text with which the text will be written. For this example we will use h1. Then we just have to click on the add button to add the block to the stack. The next block we need to add, is one of the blocks that we included, in our blog package. This block is called, blog header. So let's choose that block. This block adds the posted by line underneath the headline. We actually added some settings to this block, but we decided to have these settings on the C5DK blog settings page in the dashboard. This will be explained in a later video. Right now, let's add the final block to this stack. As an example, I just want to add a horizontal line to finalize the header. Now let's approve our changes. Our stack is now saved, and we can now go back to the stacks page to continue. As you see here, our stack is now created and available. Let's now create our second stack. This stack will be used in the footer of our blog page, so I will name it, C5DK Blog Footer. Let's add the stack. One of our users once asked, how to add sharing buttons to the blog page. So I have decided to do just that. We will add the share this page block to this stack. In this block, you simply add the services you want to be able to share to. Let's choose Facebook, Twitter, Google Plus and the email service, for this example. But as this is an example, you can of course choose whatever you want. So to finish up, we just need to click on the add button. At the moment, this is the only block we want in this stack. When we created the first series of videos for installing the C5DK blog package, I said that you could add the conversation block to this stack. That will not work at the moment, simply because the conversation block will fail when embedded in a stack. So do not add the conversation block to a stack. Let's approve our changes for this stack. And let's go back to the stack list. Let's add the final stack for our blog package. This stack will have the name, C5DK Blog Sidebar. That makes sense because we will use this stack in the sidebar on our blog page. Let's click on the Add Stack button. In this stack I will start with adding one of our C5DK blog package blocks. Namely the blog go back button block. This block enables us to have a link to go back to our blog list page. It is simple and has no settings. The next block is by far the most important block for our blog system. This block is called, blog button. It will add all the functionality to make the blog system work and it will not work without this block. When it is inserted here, it will not be visible. That is because it is only visible for users with permissions to block. So do not be alarmed because you do not see what you would expect here right now. It will come later when we begin to use the blog. It might not make sense to you at the moment, but if you follow this video step by step, I will promise you that everything will work as expected at the end. But, Let's add the third block to this stack. This time, I will add the concrete 5 topics block to the stack. We use the standard concrete 5 topics block, and to fully understand this block's potentials, 
I will suggest you to go through the documentation on concrete5.org. But we have decided to dedicate a whole video to explain more about this block. You will find that video in there, adding topics to the blog page. But right now, I will just add the block to the stack with the standard settings that comes with the elemental theme. But you have to understand that, this block is very individual. And you will probably want to set it up to fulfill the needs of your blog. So please read the documentation, or wait for our video tutorial on this topic. I fully understand that some of you will say that this is not as good as you would expect with our documentation. But because the Tropic system is so versatile, we decided that this was the best way to do it. So, let's just add the block to the stack. Let's add one last block to our stack. Namely the tags block. Again here, because it's a standard concrete 5 block, and can be used on numerous ways. We will just add the block with no further explanation. We might make a dedicated video later, to explain how the tags system works. The tags system is by itself fairly easy to understand. But there can be some complications if used in different ways throughout your site. You have to understand that there is only one tags system, and by that you have to be careful how you use it if you decide to use it to other pages than your blog. But I will try to explain a lot more on this in another video on a later time. So for now, just follow the standard settings as I do in this example. I will not add a search page at the moment, again because I would like to explain this in a later video. Let's add the block. At the moment, it will not show anything, because there is no tags added at the moment. So, let's approve this stack. Remember, that because we use stacks for our content, you will be able to change everything at a later moment, if necessary. Using stacks will give you great flexibility. Let's head back to the stacks list page. As you see here, we have now added three stacks to Concrete 5. We will now add these stacks to our blog page type. So now, let's head over to the page type page again. This time we will click on the output button. And here you will see the page template for our blog page. Click on, Edit Defaults, to edit the page. You will here see the actual page for the blog. And it's time to add the content and stacks we have created before. Just click on the little pencil on the editor bar, and you will see the page in edit mode. Let's start with adding the C5DK blog header stack. By clicking on the page header area and choose add block. You should now see the block panel slide in from the left. We need to change it to stacks here in the top. Now choose the C5DK blog header. And you will see the header stack content added to the page. The next thing we need to add, is the content block, where our blog content will be contained. We need to choose blocks and go down to the bottom of the list to find the content block instance. This is a special empty content block instance that is only available when inserting on a page type page. And as you see, it is the name we gave it at an earlier stage in this video tutorial. It now might make sense why I gave it a name earlier. Now, let's add the C5DK blog footer stack to the page. As before, we need to change to stacks first. And here simply click on the stack we need. And the stack is inserted on the page. Now, I will add the conversation block directly on the page. As explained earlier, it cannot be in a stack, and it has to be inserted directly on the page type. There is a lot of settings you can play with. And it is entirely up to you how you use it. Someone might even not use the conversation block at all. So see this as an example on how it could be done. I will only make a few setting changes. I will add a new message label, and I will set the post and form, at the bottom. I will change the date format, 
and I will set the default sorting order to the most recent comment first. But as said, you can do it entirely as you want to set it up. You should also know that there actually is a few additional comments add-ons on the marketplace on Concrete5.org. Namely Discs comments and Facebook comments. You might check these add-ons out too before you make your final decisions on how you want it to work. Okay, it seemed to be finished. I might have made something wrong, but I can still change this at a later time. But be sure that this is done before your blog goes online. So, let's add the block to the page. As you see here, the conversation block is now inserted on our blog page. But I think that I made the default sorting order wrong. Let me just change that. It should have been the most recent comment first. Okay, it should be alright now. Let's finish up by adding the last stack to the sidebar. Let's add the C5DK blog site bar stack. And as you see here, the stack contains all the blocks that we added to the stack. This concludes the setting up and designing our blog page type. But as you see, there is not a one-way direction on how to design your blog page. I urge you to plan your page before beginning. You should decide on which blocks you will use, and where to place them. You also might consider to have more stacks to have even more flexibility. So let's save by clicking on the green pencil button, let us just see what we have done. We added the header section, the content section, the footer section and the sidebar section. Remember, this is our example on how to set it up. Now it's your turn. Good luck with it. There is more to do, before you can begin to use the blog package. But the hardest part is over. So let's head back to the dashboard. We have really tried to make this as simple as possible. And by viewing all the video tutorials, you should be able to create a great blog on your site. A lot of people have said that this is complicated. But I have to say, things have to be a little complicated to be easy at the end. I want to thank you for seeing through this video and I am looking forward to see you in the next video tutorial, so I have just one thing left to say. Bye for now.